Welcome to the world of video games that should have stayed on the consoles and never been adapted into TV shows. Are you ready to take a wild and hilarious ride down memory lane and discover the biggest flops in TV adaptations of video games? From cringeworthy acting deserving of a Razzie Award to storylines that make absolutely zero sense, these are shows that should have just stayed video games. You won't believe some of the terrible decisions that were made to bring your favorite video games to the small screen. But don't worry, we're here to guide you through the madness. So sit back and get ready for the ultimate roast of TV adaptations gone wrong. You do not want to miss this video. Let's take a trip to the land of endless magic and endless money-making opportunities. Every streaming service has its own mythical world to exploit, with now having Westeros, Amazon having Middle Earth, and Netflix, well, Netflix has been dipping its toes in the world of The Witcher. After a year filled with dragons and enchanted rings, The Witcher returned this holiday season with a prequel that takes us a thousand years before Henry Cavill's Geralt, soon to be Liam Hemsworth's Geralt, roam the lands. Introducing The Witcher Blood Origin, our journey begins with a somewhat awkward introduction by Jaskier, played by Joey Beatty, and Minnie Driver's mysterious magic elf. She tells us she travels through time collecting forgotten stories to bring back to life when the world needs them. But let's be real, this is just a clever way to catch us up and remind us of the world we supposedly know and love. The real story is about the first Witcher and the team of misfit warriors who brought them to the continent. Fans felt that certain areas were lacking, namely lack of character development. Fans also feel that the characters in the series lack depth and emotional connection. Maybe it's the unsatisfying ending or plot twist. Some fans may have expected a different outcome or may not have been satisfied with the resolution of the storyline. Poor casting or acting. Some fans don't like the casting choices and the acting performances in the series as well. Speaking of great video games adapted to bad TV shows, I wouldn't be any good at my job if I didn't talk about Resident Evil. Resident Evil. An incredible video game, yes, but the TV show is so bad. It makes you wish for a zombie apocalypse. The beloved survival horror game is now a TV show. And boy, talk about an adaptation gone horribly wrong. But who needs logic and common sense when you've got a franchise with a built-in fan base, right? So prepare to be underwhelmed by this disaster of a show. The highly anticipated TV adaptation of the legendary Capcom game series, Resident Evil, has finally arrived on Netflix, and fans are not impressed. The show is based on the popular and acclaimed video game franchise which boasts 30 games and 10 core titles over its 26-year history. Unlike the gaming franchise, the show has received a barrage of negative reviews that are so bad, it's causing people to question its existence on the streaming platform. With a meager 49% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and an even lower audience score of 26%, the show is in hot water. Despite featuring some recognizable faces such as Lance Riddick from The Wire and Ella Belinska from Charlie's Angels, it seems fans are not pleased with this new take on the iconic Raccoon City, with many calling it simply unwatchable. Fans are openly accusing Netflix of continuously ruining adaptations of existing storylines and IPs. So much so that some are even starting to look back fondly on the Resident Evil film series. Starring Mila Jovovich, the film franchise may not have set the world ablaze, but it still managed to run for six films over 14 years and had a better audience reception each time. Compared to Netflix's latest attempt at this gaming classic, looks like it's time for Netflix to step up their game or else face the wrath of disgruntled fans and the ghosts of adaptations past. Let's look at one of the more retro games turned to the small screen, Sonic the Hedgehog. The game is a household name, with the blue speedster having graced our screens in various video game titles for over 30 years now. Sonic the Hedgehog is one of the most well-known and widely played video games in the world. So when the decision was made to take Sonic from the gaming world to the world of television, fans were understandably excited. After all, with the success of the Sonic film adaptations, it seemed like a no-brainer that a TV show would follow and that it would be just as great, if not even better. 
Unfortunately, that excitement was short-lived, as fans were left disappointed by the TV adaptation of this beloved franchise. Despite having all the right ingredients, an iconic character, a huge fan base, and a proven track record of success on the big screen, the TV show just hasn't lived up to expectations. Fans have criticized the animation style, the voice acting, and the overall lack of quality, leaving many to wonder what went wrong. It's a shame, as Sonic has such a rich and vibrant world, filled with interesting characters and incredible action sequences. But instead of delivering an epic and exciting journey, the TV show has left fans feeling unsatisfied and underwhelmed. It just goes to show that translating a beloved video game franchise to another medium is not as easy as it may seem, and sometimes it's best to stick with what we know works. The appeal of Sonic Prime to those familiar with the franchise will be a mixed bag, with some elements resonating while others fall flat. For those unfamiliar with Sonic, the show may not offer much in terms of depth or excitement. The voice acting in particular is a point of contention for many fans. While some characters like Sonic and Shadow are well cast, others, such as Knuckles and Dr. Eggman, have been received less favorably. It's clear that the new cast may not be the best fit for this particular iteration of the story, leading to a less than stellar viewing experience. Additionally, the animation style of Sonic Prime is another aspect that may divide audiences. While the show has a unique look, it also lacks the fluidity and high-quality animation that fans have come to expect from other Sonic media. Some of the character designs also don't quite match up with the original games, which may disappoint some fans. The show's storyline also leaves a lot to be desired. It seems like the creators tried to make the show appeal to both new and old fans, but in doing so, the plot becomes convoluted and hard to follow. The show tries to juggle too many characters and subplots, and as a result, some of the storylines feel rushed and incomplete. The show also lacks the humor and the heart that made the game so beloved. All in all, Sonic Prime may be a decent show for younger children or diehard Sonic fans, but for others, it may fall short of expectations. The show's lackluster voice acting, animation, and storyline make it a disappointing outing for the Blue Hedgehog. Fans of Sonic may want to stick to the games, movies, or other media that have done a better job of capturing the spirit of the franchise. If you're a diehard fan of the Sonic the Hedgehog series, you may still find some enjoyment in this Netflix offering. However, for those who were hoping for a thrilling and innovative take on the beloved Blue Hedgehog and his friends, Sonic Prime falls short. Despite a few flashes of promise, the show ultimately falls into the realm of mediocrity, failing to distinguish itself from other entries in the franchise. Those are the shows that should've just stayed video games.